Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to be answering the question of what can SharePoint be used for? Now, this is a very common question um, in which people get started using SharePoint and start thinking about, well, what are all the kind of other use cases that SharePoint can be used for? So I'm going to walk you through a few examples and actually show you a place that you can even install these completely for free. So let's jump in and get started. So all the cool, updated, modern uh, templates from Microsoft can be accessed from what they call their SharePoint Lookbook. Now you can easily get access to this by Googling SharePoint Lookbook and the very top link up here will take you to it. So this is a catalog of all the different SharePoint sites that Microsoft offer completely for free. Um, some of which are already integrated into SharePoint's user interface so you can just automatically create them and some of them you will need to go into the SharePoint lookbook to get a bit of inspiration and even deploy those examples directly to your own SharePoint site. So go in here and take a little look because there's all sorts of cool new things in here. So if you take a little look at the home page you can see a couple of different exact design examples you can see. Um, they're all using native sort of out of the box SharePoint so the designs are going to be um, using similar kind of features and layouts that you're familiar with but also there's some collections in here which um, will essentially put them together in a way that could be used for a very specific purpose so if I just scroll to the top again and click on see examples that'll actually jump me down to this bottom area so you can either scroll or you can just click on that see examples and what this will do is it will actually categorize them into templates which are used for organizations or organization wide. So this might be more like internet type of home pages or things which are for the whole organization. Uh, we've got departments. So these are specific department related templates. Teams using the kind of team site templates for specific purposes as well as communities, solutions and even now we've got dedicated schools related templates. So let's jump in and just take a little look at a couple of examples. So under organization, we've got things like leadership connection. So this is a example of a SharePoint site, which has been used by um, the senior leaders of an organization to communicate certain information. So it might be using some large navigational tiles across the top to help bounce people into uh, useful areas. There might be a summary of kind of news, which is coming from executive teams. So latest sort of information from um, the C-suite, as well as maybe integrating things like videos from stream or YouTube, maybe things like Q and A's that have come from town hall meetings and things like that can be embedded directly into here. We've also got some other navigation down here. So this is actually just a hero web part, but it's been used in a tile. Now I quite like this look and feel. So it's something that I encourage people to incorporate into that overall SharePoint design. You can also see we can get feeds built in from things like Yammer, uh, which is um, essentially a way of having a social kind of feed almost inside of there. We could also embed things like Twitter feeds if we wanted to natively into our SharePoint sites. Um, but anything else, any other type of social media feeds, um, it really comes down to how you can embed them. Um, so if it was like a Facebook feed, or Instagram or Pinterest or whatever it is, you have to generate the kind of the embed and then use the embed web part to put that onto your SharePoint page. We've also got the use of the events web part down here as this kind of tiled use. But overall, this is just one example of how SharePoint is being used to communicate information from senior leaders. Oh, I think I've just clicked on the uh, back button too many times here, so it's just taking me to the bottom of the page. So other types of layouts, we've got this perspective. So this is more of an intranet kind of homepage. Again, we've got the tiles on the top left-hand corner here, but also we're introducing this kind of right-hand bar into the mix. So you can see this is almost a... a, a, a secondary content area. So it's very useful to have things like maybe world clocks or weather embedded in here, which are again, default part of SharePoint. We're using the hero tiles, but they're a little bit smaller because obviously we're now only using the two thirds of the screen. And on the right hand side, um, we, we've got this kind of, um, as a secondary content area. Um, but this is an internet homepage. So the, the kind of use of this is to communicate um, with your organization and provide them a place to easily navigate to key resources. 
So we're communicating through news articles, but we're also providing sort of navigational links down um, further down for um, useful things that people are gonna want to find or signing up or registering for events, company events coming up, recent sites, things like that. So this is a really common kind of um, look and feel for an intranet homepage. Um, so just jump back into our organization. Oh, there we go. Um, a new site. So another use of SharePoint is to actually, if, and, and to be honest, this type of SharePoint site is only really used by much larger enterprise level organizations. Um, ones which have got a lot of news being generated. So what they do is they create a new site, which almost becomes like a newsletter or blog or um, essentially a centralized uh, sort of area where all of the news is kind of fed up into. So we can see we can go directly into some news articles from the Tao's web part, some rolling up some news from here. We've got a kind of hub news kind of layout here, uh, more kind of roll ups. Um, but essentially, this news site is pulling out news from multiple different locations. So as we know, SharePoint isn't just kind of one internet homepage and then you're done. It's made up of multiple different SharePoint department sites and other things that you might want to be communicating. Now, you can roll all of these news up onto one news site to make it much easier. Um, I've also seen things like audience targeting being used on news for things like um, what country that you're based in, what department or what business unit that you're actually a member of, and then you can customize that news experience. So when you land on here, maybe this news bar here would say something like my department's news or my country's news or something like that. Again, to, to customize and bespoke that experience to the user that's viewing this news site. So that, again, that's just another use of, of how SharePoint can be used. Um, crisis communications. So maybe it's something like um, you're, you're working, this was actually really useful, I should say, in the COVID kind of pandemic kind of period of time where sort of things were changing all the time, rules were changing all the time, and what, the, what, what companies were expecting of their employees were changing all the time, whether they're in the office, not in the office, whether they were... Uh, shutting down or having a furlough period of time, all these different things. It was a constant kind of turmoil kind of sort of period. Um, now, crisis management sites are perfect for that because you can communicate with your employees. You can create this kind of single source of truth to say, this is the, the, the area that you go to get the latest information, um, who you should contact, useful resources, updates, feeds, which are maybe coming from World Health Organization or other kind of trusted sources. You can have that all inside of one place. Um, I've also seen it used for things like when there's been earthquakes or other types of major kind of um, environmental disasters. And essentially, this is a place that's been used um, for people to get the latest information, how they can help um, their colleagues. Um, if a colleague's sort of having issues, what kind of resources, who to call, um, that sort of stuff, it can be really beneficial. So that's just another example of how SharePoint could be used. Um, other sort of things, so we can see benefits, so company benefits being displayed. Um, so things like this is often run by kind of like the HR or people kind of department, but benefits for your company. So sort of showing them sort of any tuition kind of assistance, um, health care, dental care, whatever it is, it's actually really useful for an employer to kind of make a real song and dance about what their kind of company offers um, their employees so that people don't forget because people do forget sometimes how good they've got it and retaining staff can be quite difficult. So having a place where people can go and they can find information, they can get sort of uh, information on or even like FAQ type things are like, how do I book a medical appointment or something like that? Or what app do I need to use um, to, to do that? Um, it's all really useful information that people are often searching for and you can provide it to them in a sort of single kind of all under one kind of roof area about their company benefits. Um, so again, this is really useful, especially for employee retention um, and sort of building out that kind of single source of truth, your internet of all the information an employee could possibly need all under one roof. I just wanted to quickly pause to ask a favor. If you're enjoying this video, please do like the video and subscribe as it really helps my channel grow. 
If you're looking to quickly learn SharePoint and upskill in this area, then I'd also recommend going and checking out my membership. And the membership is only 99p a month, so it's not going to break the bank. And you can see here, I already have around 100 paid members. If you go into the membership tab, you'll be able to see there's actually a whole host of training materials which are members only content. So getting started, you could use this sort of training um, to understand exactly what is SharePoint, um, how to use it for advanced document management, um, how to build out an intranet, best practice around search. And then once you've understood all of that, you could then use further down these videos for actually building out your own internet. So this is a three part series um, and you go through step by step building out an internet with me. Along the way, we'll learn how to build a really cool, engaging SharePoint internet homepage, but also SharePoint department sites and understanding how they work together. Also, um, as part of the membership options, there's a dedicated Q&A area. So I do my best to answer all the questions and comments on my videos, but it's starting to get a bit too big. So for the priority questions, I'm reserving an area for my members that they can ask Q&As and they can ask any questions that they like and then I'll use it as a priority area to respond to your questions related to SharePoint and Microsoft 365. There's also a little area down here where um, I'm offering up other types of training courses soon um, and recording those videos and I'm polling people to find out what training they would like to see. And obviously Power Automate for Beginners is a bit of a kind of front runner at the moment. So there'll be some more content about Power Automate coming out very shortly. But let's get back to the video. Other types of uses of SharePoint can be really good for kind of sharing awareness or knowledge um, to educate employees on certain topics that they might not really know. So things like LGBTQ+, or Hispanic Her Heritage Month, are default templates that Microsoft offer to bolster your kind of intranet and plug in more information that can help share awareness around those specific topics. But you could take that with a bit of a pinch of salt and create more templates yourself around more things which maybe are impactful in your particular type of industry or your organization. Scrolling back up to the top, we can see we've also got department related um, SharePoint sites. So this could be, say, for example, um, sales. So it might be a sales department site where we're kind of giving out information to our sales team and making it nice and easy for them to access sales materials and other things they need for their job. Same goes for retail operations. You could also build out things like for an event which is coming up. So this is like the conference template. So we can see a countdown to an event that's going on. This is really useful, especially if there's a large organization that you had a, a key event that's coming up that you wanted to build up hype and awareness around maybe a particular conference that you're taking your team to, or maybe it was even like an internal thing, like a Christmas party that you're trying to build up um, a bit of awareness, a bit of hype around, a bit of excitement. So you can have that countdown timer, a bit of text to explain what it is. Say, for example, you were running like a, a, an internal kind of learning training day. You could have breakout sessions with different time slots in here, uh, keynotes and things like that. This is them showing that like, you could have tickets, for example, in here. But it could be all sorts of different things that you use this type of template for. But I think it's really cool, really useful, um, the ability to be able to kind of build up an awareness about something. I've also seen it used for like product launches and all sorts of different things like that that you're trying to build up awareness around. Let's just go back up here then, back into our department area. And what else have we got in here? So marketing hub. So again, a marketing hub is really useful um, for things like making sure that everyone's got the latest kind of marketing materials, um, news about maybe new products that's coming up. But again, just key things from marketing, things like brand guidelines, um, photos and image libraries and galleries that you might want to provide to people, um, email templates, all those types of things which you know that often people go rogue and start creating their own one. Or maybe they've saved a version of, of something to their computer which is old and out of date. And you want to provide that single source of truth again. So you're, you're again, you're building, you're bolstering your intranet up with more information building out this single source of truth even further. So now we've got marketing materials in there that people can easily access. Again, marketing events um, put into here and get a bit of text and a bit of waffle around kind of where we're kind of operating in the world and that sort of stuff. So again, a really kind of useful thing for a department to use. 
We've got team um, templates. So these, um, so the, the idea of a team is more collaboration based. So this is something where a team is working together on something. Now these are can also be used in conjunction with Microsoft Teams for those kind of conversations and collaborating on files. But a team site is really useful to act like a mini like website for that team to be working together. Now there's a couple of different options in here. So we've got like planning, uh, progress, sort of project management, things like that, announcements, as well as sort of resource tracking and that sort of stuff. But I quite like this product support one because we can see in here as a product team, we can see a list of our products in here, um, maybe where they're up to in a kind of development process, maybe customer scripts, sort of product demos, where kind of um, sales are going and things like that, or kind of useful information about kind of products which are coming up, key dates, announcements, um, maybe a sort of call to action to take you into Microsoft Teams for a conversation, or if you've got um, a kind of maybe a new product idea or feature, maybe that bounces you into a survey or a form to submit that idea. As I say, there's a couple of different types of um, uh, areas in here. So we've also got things like community for charitable related things, branding sites to make it easier to know how to use the kind of branding. We've got solutions. So this in itself is a whole can um, of worms to kind of dive into, but there's loads of things which will make it really easy um, for kind of SharePoint to be adopted using the kind of learning pathways, or maybe even um, look at how to improve your onboarding process using the new employee onboarding sites, uh, things like that. Um, or just in general, the kind of um, the ability for kind of inspiring training and adoption can be used for this type of template. So we can jump into here and this will basically help new site owners in your organization to create engaging SharePoint sites that achieve specific business outcomes. So this is a really good kind of place to get started. If you're just using SharePoint and you're just getting started with your process, maybe have a little look at this. Now I did say before that you can use any of these templates. So any of these templates you jump into, you can click on add to your tenant and this will guide you through the process of deploying. It's really simple. All you need to do really is give it a name and it will then automatically go and provision that site for you. So you can see here the SharePoint uh, success site is built on blah, blah, blah. Um, please uh, please finish them before continue. So yeah, so you can see it will automatically deploy it. Uh, once it's deployed, it will give you a link and you can click on that and go directly to that SharePoint site. So it's nice and simple to use that kind of deployment tool, really easy um, and again, completely free from Microsoft. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do like the video, subscribe to my channel, and again, go and check out that membership area because it could really help slingshot your understanding of SharePoint and get you going much quicker.